Hey everybody, my name is Michael Flynn. I'm an associate professor of political science at Kansas State University. Uh, and Greg has asked me to talk a little bit about my background and offer you some tips for writing a master's thesis. Uh, so first, I got my PhD from Binghamton University in New York in 2013. My research focuses mainly on U.S. foreign policy and the intersection of politics and economics, uh, kind of how uh, political and economic interests basically influence actors' assessments of and interests in uh, different foreign policy, uh, different foreign policy making areas. Uh, another big area that my research focuses on is uh, U.S. military deployments overseas. Uh, basically, thinking about you know, what do these deployments look like? Um, you know, what do, what do people in the host nations think of these deployments? And what effects do these deployments have on the host nations with respect to uh, kind of political and economic and, and social outcomes? And that's kind of the big project that I'm working on currently. Uh, so the first question that Greg asked me to address is, uh, you know, what are the most important recommendations for developing or writing a successful thesis? So I think that the big thing for me when I was in graduate school was really crystallizing my idea, my research question. Uh, and so there are a couple of things that you can do, I think, to, to help you do this. The first is even if you're not into quantitative or statistical methodology, I think thinking about your question in terms of kind of a regression framework, right? Uh, thinking in terms of, of an equation like y equals x1 plus x2, something like that. Um, I think that this can uh, be a really good starting point for crystallizing what are the moving parts of, of your, your model, right? What are you really interested in? Um, I think sometimes people can really go down the theoretical rabbit hole and lose sight of the substantive importance of their research. And ultimately, most of, this, most of us get into this because there's some sort of empirical phenomenon that catches our, our interest and, and gets us asking questions about why the world works in a certain way or, or you know, what effects X has on Y. So I think this can be a really useful framework, even if you never run a regression model. It just forces you to kind of specify the different parts, the outcome and the various predictors of your model uh, in a way that can, can really ground your research. The second step here, uh, I think, is to come up with a general kind of workflow, right? A, a sort of outline uh, for your research project. I'm really terrible about developing really full outlines. Um, but I think that uh, it's, it's also easy to, I think, go down the rabbit hole with outlines, too, and, and making them overly detailed. But I think just laying out the structure of your paper, I think, can be really helpful, right? Writing down four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, however many section headers that cover, uh, you know, kind of what, what's the story that you want to tell and what are the main sort of chapters or sections of that story, right? What are the main components that you need to talk about? What are the big ideas or relevant topics that you need to cover um, across that, right? And this could be, you know, basically an introduction, you know, why do people care about this? Why do you care about this? Then it can get into, you know, the, you know, maybe one, two, three, whatever sections on kind of the theoretical development or key theoretical components. Um, you know, then your research design, your analysis, right? Talking about what you did, how you did it, and then ultimately your conclusions. So I think structuring the, the kind of body of your thesis at the outset, I think that can be a really good uh, complement to thinking in terms of a regression framework, right? You kind of crystallize the question, the key moving parts, and then that can help you to sort of structure your paper and think about what are the, uh, are the main sections you need to talk about. Now, the last question that he asked was, you know, what's the hardest part of writing uh, uh, or research for you? Um, you know, I think that this is something that while it gets easier, I think everybody from graduate students, MA, PhD level, all the way up to faculty, I think just getting started and, and this idea of kind of committing something to paper can seem really daunting, right? It can feel like you're really kind of locking yourself in. Uh, again, this gets a little bit easier as you get further along in your career. Um, but ultimately, you know, I can't count how many times I rewrite the first three or four pages of a paper when I work on it. Um, you know, you start writing and you say, this is garbage, right? This is awful. Uh, and then you, you know, you just try again, right? Until, um, you know, until it gets better. And I think that this, this is really key, right? This is the central takeaway. Um, you know, committing to something at the outset can seem really, really daunting because you're really putting yourself out there, right? Your decisions with respect to a model or your, your sort of theoretical argument, right? You're really putting yourself out there and opening yourself up to criticism. Um, but I think when you start to really grapple with this idea that uh, there is no perfection, right? There is no perfection to be attained. 
Um, you know, no paper, no theoretical argument, no uh, you know statistical model, no formal model. Um, you know, no qualitative research design. There is no perfection, right? This is this is really an iterative process. We just keep trying. We keep kind of taking stabs at it. We you know approach the topic from different angles. And I think once you really start to internalize this, um, you know, you won't really feel as frustrated when you have to kind of start over or redo, uh, you know, particular sections or redo, uh, you know, something related to your model, um, right? It becomes a little bit less personal. And I think there's a little bit less anxiety associated uh, with putting something on paper. Once you, you know, you open yourself up to this idea that there is no perfection and, uh, you know, you, you can welcome uh, advice and guidance on different ways to tackle a problem, uh, and I think that this is, it's its something I'm still working on, but again, I think once you really start to think in these terms, um, it can make the process a little bit easier, right? When you realize that you can, um, you know, redo work over and over again, right? To, to tweak it and to improve it. Um, I think that that, uh, you know, it becomes a little bit less about, uh, you know, the, the author, the researcher and their ego and feeling like you have to sort of know everything. Um, you know, it, it's really kind of a collective kind of community and, and team-based enterprise. And I think that that uh, is a really important adjustment to make uh, coming out of undergrad and into graduate school. So I hope that this helps. Um, you know, I'm always interested to, to kind of, you know, hear from students if you have any questions or, or you know, are interested in advice for, uh, you know, topics that I, I study. I'm, you know, happy to hear from you. My email is down in the, um, uh, the overlay here on the screen. Um, you know, I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope this was useful and, uh, you know, hope to hear from you. So take care.